Exactly. And this morning, it is about two members of the Orange Democratic Public from the coastal region and also some several members of the uh, county assembly in, uh, in Homa Bay County who are supposed to be expelled from the party because of gross misconduct. And so this morning, that is a discussion we are having with you on our social media platform. So far, I can see so much of your feedback. And it is a discussion we are asking you whether you support ODM's disciplinary committee uh, decision uh, to actually have pro ruto MPs expelled from the party. Let me repeat that again for you. Do you support ODM's disciplinary committee uh, decision to have pro ruto MPs expelled from the party? And of course, it is a discussion that so far it's um, hitting a lot of debate on our social media platform at KTN Kenya at Zeda Brenda. Begin with the hashtag KTN News. It is also a discussion that we shall later on be having uh, with Odwar Ongwen, who is the ODM Executive Director. But first, the ODM's disciplinary committee has recommended that Malindi Member of Parliament Aisha Jumwa and Hamsambweni counterpart, that is Suleiman Dori, be expelled from the Orange Party for gross misconduct. Also recommended for expulsion are six members of the Homa Bay County Assembly following recent acts of violence, unruly behavior, and disobedience to party decisions. The National Executive Committee, which adopted the report, shall invite the eight members to appear before it at a special NEC meeting early next year prior to the final decision being taken. ODM is not a party that tolerates disorder and unruly behavior by her members. The disciplinary committee in its report has recommended the expulsion from the party of Honorable Aisha Jumwa, who is the MP Malindi, and Honorable Suleiman Dori, who is a member of parliament from Sambweni, for gross misconduct. Having looked at the report of a disciplinary committee, the National Executive Council of the party has adopted the report, and the NEC shall invite the members who have been recommended for expulsion to appear before it at a special NEC meeting to be held early next year, prior to the final decision being taken by the party. All right, now let's talk to Odor Ongwen, who is the ODM Executive Director, about this whole expel, uh, well, this members of, of, of members of the county assembly and members of parliament being expelled from the party. And uh, Mr. Ongwen, thank you so much for, for joining us here on KTN News Center. This decision is being made at a time when the ODM party and the Jubilee party are working together in terms of the Building Bridges Initiative. Uh, thank you, Brenda. I think, uh, first of all, uh, I want to thank all those who are contributing to this debate. And uh, the first thing we must always be faithful to is our constitution as a country. Then we have the legislation that issue from that constitution. And uh, in our constitution, chapter four is very clear on bills of rights which uh, guarantees us the freedom of association, the freedom of expression, and other freedoms. And uh, ODM has been at the forefront of promoting uh, these freedoms. We must also uh, accept the fact that uh, within those uh, uh, provisions, uh, and especially freedom of association, we have various societies and associations, including political parties, governed by various acts. And political parties are governed by the Political Parties uh, Act of uh, 2011. That act also requires the parties to have the consti their constitutions. And these constitutions must be filed with the registrar of political parties. And that act stipulates circumstances under which various parties can uh, be able to enforce discipline within their parties. As ODM, we have an elaborate process of dealing with the issues of uh, discipline. Because we believe in this African saying that you cannot shave somebody's head in his absence. So if there is an issue of misconduct, an issue of indiscipline, the first thing we do is to give the member alleged 
to be committing uh, uh, this, uh, indiscretion to be able to put their case forward. Right, and in all these cases, please let me just put okay. this in context. In all these cases, we have almost five steps before a, uh, an ultimate decision can be made. All these, the first step was a letter from the national chairman of the party asking them to show cause after these allegations had been made against them, why uh, uh, the, the, the discipline should not be uh, activated. Um, some of them decided to ignore the, the, the letters, some of them responded, and after the disciplinary committee evaluating their responses, uh, they were called to a sitting. Some of them decided to ignore and send uh, their legal representatives. But as we said, we you cannot shave somebody's head in his own absence. So they were given a second chance and said, yes, you have a right to legal representation, but you must appear yourself because these are personal conducts that are being um, questioned. So all these members, uh, most of them did appear before a sitting of the disciplinary committee. The evidence against them was tabled before them. And after that, because we had more than 20 cases, after that, some of them were found uh, not to warrant any sanctions. There are others who are fined some small sums of money. There are, sums, there are some of them who were reprimanded. And then there are these nine cases where the committee recommended expulsion. As All you right. know, expulsion thank, thank is you for that thing. explanation. Yes. Thank you for that explanation, Mr. Ngwen. Yes. But let's look at the case in point of Suleiman Dori, Msamweni Member of Parliament, and Malindi Member of Parliament, Aisha Jumwa. They are saying that they're working with the Deputy President to bring development to the people of the coastal region. How would you term that as, as a, mis, a gross misconduct? Yet at the same time, we are seeing your party leader, Raila Odinga, working with President Uhuru Kenyatta when it comes to bringing Kenyans together and in the fight against corruption. Th thank you very much, Brenda. I'm, I'm uh, happy you have brought this issue of the handshake. Uh, first of all, I think uh, the handshake is very clearly spelled in the memorandum of understanding that was signed between uh, His Excellency Uhuru Kenyatta and His Excellency Raila Odinga on 9th of March. And it has nine issues, very clearly spelled. And these were about uh, re-engineering the architecture of our country so that we don't have a situation where every four years we fight each other because of elections. We don't have a situation where we can not talk of national ethos and so on. So these issues are clearly spelled. And the handshake was about bringing closure to 2017 election, which almost tore this country apart. So it was not about uh, endorsing another, uh, another party's candidate or whatever it is. The deputy president is the deputy president of the republic. And every member of our society is free to associate with them as long as they keep within the, uh, the rules of their associations. So these two are not being punished because they have welcomed the deputy president in their, in their, ho in their homes or constituencies. The evidence was clearly put before them. Some, some of them, they were played video footages like one of them saying, I have no contract with ODM. That is not about associating with the, the deputy president. And we know that 2022 will come, and other elections will come. And when they come, every party will have its own candidate. Raila Odinga right. has not stood up and uh, endorsed the, the candidate of another party for any election. So what we are talking about is utterances, conduct, that do clearly violate our constitution. And the party constitution, uh, which was invoked, uh, is very clear in Article 8.3 and 8.4. So the, uh, let's, let's not mix All right. uh, indiscipline with, uh, with uh, public duty of uh, being able to support 
the All leadership right. of now, the let's country. Talk about, let's talk about the meeting that your party leader, Raila Odinga, had with some members of parliament. And in that meeting, among members of parliament who, are, who, are, who attended that meeting is uh, Suleiman Dori, someone whose uh, conduct is being questioned by your party. And does Dori meeting your party leader, and of course he expressed... Um, uh, he expressed uh, Aisha Jumwa's, you know, concern and the sentiments because he said that Aisha Jumwa is in Burundi for the interparliamentary sports meeting. But my question is, that meeting that happened yesterday between Raila Odinga and some members of parliament, who include members of parliament that you say have gross misconduct, will it have any effect on the decision of the disciplinary board? Brenda, I want to state very clearly that uh, the organs of ODM are clearly spelled in our constitution. It is in the public domain that uh, our party leader is very accessible. And therefore, all manner of people, including from other political parties, do meet him once in a while. That should not in any way interfere with laid down procedures of uh, conducting the affairs of the party. Um, the National Executive Council did receive a report from uh, an independent committee, that is the disciplinary committee. Uh, they have given the members concerned another chance so that they can uh, see whether the recommendations should be upheld or not. And by the way, NEC is not even the final organ. Once these members appear before them, if they still think that these need to be expelled, the NEC cannot do that. It has to make a recommendation to the National Governing Council, which has to vote uh, and pass this by two-thirds majority of the members of the National Governing Council. So right. we have an elaborate process. Okay. Now let's yeah. talk about the statement by Raila Odinga. Let me just read it for you. Let me just quote him um, word for word. And he says that um, he assured the cost, the, a section of members of parliament from the coastal region that their colleagues mentioned in the disciplinary committee report of the ODM will be given a fair hearing by the National Executive Council. What does this mean to the party disciplinary council when that it comes is, to fair hearing? That is exactly what I'm talking about, Brenda, that uh, the disciplinary committee made a recommendation. Uh, the National Executive Council received the report and said before we, re uh, we can vote either to uh, take your recommendation forward, we want all these members to uh, appear before us. I think that is a fair chance. So the party leader was exactly reiterating what the National Executive Council said. So what you're confirming for us is, despite uh, Suleiman Dori and some members of parliament from the ODM party whose conduct has been questioned meeting Raila Odinga, it will not have any effect of the decision that will be made at the end of the day. Brenda, I've said we have organs. Okay. Now let's talk about the gross misconduct of the members of the county assembly of the Migori, of rather Homer Bay County, I beg your pardon, sorry for that, uh, Mr. Ongwen. Let's talk about their conduct. However, as much as you're saying that these members of county assembly went against the party's decision and the party's requirement, there is a question of accountability when it comes to the speaker of Homer Bay County on how she's utilizing public funds and on her leadership at the county. Uh, Brenda, again here, and uh, it's a very, very sad situation. County assemblies, national assemblies, Senate are guided by rules. They are houses of order. There has been a dispute in the county assembly of uh, Homer Bay. Uh, there was one time that uh, the party even advised them to go and follow their standing orders and elect leadership they wanted. But when the national chairman asked them, please postpone that for the time being so that we can try to bring you together, they uh, defied the, the party the chairman. After that, the Central Committee put a special team to mediate headed by Honorable uh, Timothy Busire, who is our national treasurer, and the senator of uh, Homer Bay, uh, Senator Moses Kajuang. And they met, and in the spirit of give and take, they did agree to the leadership. A few days later, they 
came with another issue completely, which is about impeachment of the speaker. And I want to say it is not about, uh, it's not the work of us as a party to decide on who becomes a speaker in any county assembly or in a national assembly. That is strictly within the province of the members. But these members and uh, the Kenyans should um, really condemn this, uh, the, the, this culture that is taking root where instead of using logic, reason, to debate, we want to use fists and weapons. Uh, this was, uh, th these members were accused in the uh, disciplinary committee for assaulting somebody, and that somebody happens to be the speaker. We don't want to go into the performance of the speaker. That is for the members of the county assembly to deal with. But this was somebody's mother, somebody's wife, Instead of using the existing rules and procedures to deal with their discretions or uh, alleged discretions, you want to use fists, you want to use weapons, crude weapons at that, to beat somebody's wife, somebody's mother, somebody's daughter, somebody's sister. So what was being dealt with was the act of violence. I don't know whether we do condone that now we are in a law of the jungle where when we disagree on an issue, instead of using debate and reason, we want to use uh, so what you're telling us, what you're telling us here this morning, it is that the ODM party only has an issue with how the Homer Bay County Assembly Speaker was being removed from office and it is not because that your party members of the County Assembly were fighting the Speaker. No, the, 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 the issue of removal and the election of the Speaker, that is not the work of the All party. right, all right. Now, let's talk about pressure that has been piling on the National Executive Council of the ODM party to ensure that Aisha Jumwa and Suleiman Dori are removed from the party. And this pressure has been piling so much, especially from leaders of the coastal region. So as much as you're talking about a fair hearing in terms of ensuring that these people are given a fair hearing, will this pressure actually at the end of the day affect the decision that will be taken because they say that they don't want them in the party because of supporting DP's presidential bid of 2022. Uh, Brenda, if we were just about uh, being driven by the pressure, uh, these members would be out of the party maybe even six months, seven months ago. However, we are a party of rules. We are a party which has got constitution. We are a party that is faithful to the laws and constitution of this country. And we are a party that promotes democracy and fair process. And that is why uh, each part of the way, we will evaluate uh, the merits and demerits of the case before that particular organ. Because as I have said, uh, NEC is not even the final organ. Uh, it will only evaluate. And if it feels that all or some of these do merit uh, expulsion from the party, it has no power to do that. It will just recommend to the National Governing Council, which will vote by a two-thirds majority. I or know the feelings of our members, but we have processes, we have institutions, and we have structures that we must obey. All right, let's look at a scenario whereby probably the party goes ahead and decides, you know what, Suleiman Dori, mem Samweni member of parliament, you need to be out of the party, Malindi member of parliament, Aisha Jumwa, you need to be out of the party. How sure are you that should these members be expelled from this party, that ODM will clinch these two parliament, parliamentary seats because a by-election has to be done? Uh, Brenda, every, every party is in power to win elections. However, you do not win at the expense of order and uh, decorum within the party. So if the National Governing Council eventually decides, so be it. Uh, it will not be the first time we have lost a seat, uh, but we definitely would want a situation where we increase our seats rather than lose them. However, we must do them within um, a certain framework, within a certain architecture, and within established institutions. All right, as we bring this conversation to an end, Ms. Tongwen, um, my concern is, and let me just um, give you a sample of uh, 
two questions that uh, so, so much feedback on our social media platform. And uh, there's um, Madaga who says on, on this is a concern from, um, from our Twitter handle because we had asked whether they support ODM's uh, disciplinary committee decision to have pro ruto MPs expelled from your party. And um, Madaga says ODM has always been haunted by the big man's syndrome. They are only doing it to appease Raila, obvious of the fact that the gallows they create for others are the same that will be used to hang them. Kenyans are not fools. Uh, I, I don't know whether that is our member or not, but... Uh, this, is, this, is a, this is a feedback yes, from uh, a social media Yeah, that's platform. what I'm saying, yeah. because the feedbacks uh, can come from our members or non-members. But I think the most important thing is that we have a constitution... We have rules and regulations, and we are faithful to them. All right. So what would you say about members of other parties who are members, who are, who are members of the National Coalition, that is NASA, the National Super Alliance Coalition, who have been strongly supporting your ODM party leader, Raila Odinga, at the expense of their party leaders? Brenda, I'm the executive director of ODM. Uh, that question you can put either to those parties or to NASA. Um, for me, I can only speak on behalf of ODM. All right. Thank you so much, Odur Ongwen, who is the ODM, the Orange Democratic Party Movement um, Executive Director, talking to us about that ODM Disciplinary Committee has report that the seven... Uh, political leaders from the party, six uh, MCAs from Homer Bay County and uh, two from the coastal region 